Good morning, everybody. You are listening to the Cindy Cochran Show. Yes, you are coming straight out of downtown Conroe, Texas, in the heart of Texas. Uh, and remember, this is where the Texas flag, the design of the Texas flag, was born right here. How exciting that is. So, uh, and the most fun part about what we found out about was that, you know, the Texas flag actually should be just the opposite. But when the guy laid the design in front of um, of the one that was going to sign off on the design, he, he laid it backwards to him. It was right for him, but it was backwards to the guy that was signing off on it. So he signed off on it, and the red really should have been on top. So so, I, so he took chilies? He took chilies uh, and, and totally stole their stuff. It was not fair. But... Uh, you know, not many people know this, so I'm just letting you have that little bit of information that you can, you know, around the water cooler, in the lunchroom, impress your friends and say, and where'd you hear that? Oh, the Cindy Cochran Show. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you did. Hey, listen, we have got an exciting show today because of, of the guest that's going to be on, Don Wilson. Uh, Don Wilson, you go like, uh, wait a minute, was he, was he the guy that was the narrator? For, no, 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 don't try and point point uh pin this name because you probably may have not you haven't heard of this name i don't think but all the people he hangs out with you've heard of all of them and the reason is is because uh elvis presley took him under his wing and i I think that is the source of why he has so many friends and so many pictures with all these great celebrities and i put a few on my facebook the cindy cochran show if you go there right now and you'll be able to see who he is uh and uh, when he when we met, he had come to Channel 13, 1976. Just think of that, 1976. Wow, I was only four years old at the time. No, that's not right. That's not true. I was interpreting the news for the deaf on Channel 13 that I did for about 10 years. And he came there to be interviewed because Channel 13 had heard about what Elvis Presley was doing for him. So they wanted to, and Elvis was uh, in town, I think, for the rodeo, I believe. But uh, anyway, he's going to talk about that. And he's coming up and uh, in our next segment, and we'll, we'll be with us throughout the show, and we're going to talk about people that he knew, how you know how he came to the situation, and how amazing his life has been. And he is now in L.A., so uh, now we can say we got somebody in L.A. that's listening to us, at least for a day. No, he's been listening uh, for a while to make sure he can put his voice to the show. And you know, I, I tell people, I said, look, I'm going to talk for the f- first 15 minutes. I'll talk about things, random things that are going on. And then uh, you'll come on the second segment. And what I do that for is I try and get them calmed down and all. And the other is, is when I'm finished with that first segment, I look up and if they're still in the room, then I know it's okay that they they decide, okay, I'll stay on the show. But uh, if they walk out, we understand it's, it's okay. But this show is, uh, as you will hear on our liners and stuff that uh, it is most opinionated talk show the side of montgomery county so uh we take pride i take pride in that and we talk about all different kinds of things we talk about politics we i love politics i love anything spiritual i love that that you know that subject matter as well the two things that your mom told you don't talk about in public is religion and politics and so that's exactly what i like to do uh here also in the house today uh we have Joey, and I'm going to say, because Sheaf, 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 I knew it. I was just testing you. Joey Sheaf. Joey Sheaf is in here, and uh, he is someone that's going to hopefully be here every Thursday and Friday, and because he wants to be, uh, you know, in communications and the media, and he's going to college, and he's getting ready to see all this stuff and, and learn about all this. But he wants to be firsthand, firsthand right here on the Cindy Cochran Show and find out what radio is all about. Boy, what a show to come to. So when he gets in his classes and starts saying, well, don't you do it this way? This is the way. Well, who, who did that? Where did you learn your stuff from? No, but uh, Richard's a very able uh, communicator about what goes on behind the scenes. And so probably, Joey, you should watch Richard more than me but uh, Joey I hope to have on the show tomorrow with uh, the other two interns that we have Kalina and Kiara and they're so cute and so uh, we'll have them all up here and find out why do you want to you know be behind the scenes in radio what is the what is the communication draw to you from this all these kids know 
everything about social media. I mean, they're born into it, so they're not afraid of it. And someone like me and my age, I go like, what is this? Why do you have to know so much? And why do you keep asking me questions? And I just want to push a button and things happen for me. That's all I want. And uh, But no. And so I'm, I'm here to to try and learn and get through this. And I have my Facebook page all set up now so that you guys can ask questions uh, to Don. You can ask questions about uh, all the different people that uh, he has hung out with. He did send me a picture of of Mindy Miller, which was uh, reportedly one of Elvis Presley's last girlfriend. And uh, he and Mindy standing there. And then I kind of did some research on Mindy and uh and her talking about her relationship with Elvis, and it was it was really interesting. So she, he said she's going to be listening today. So we sure want to be put on a good face for her, and that's what I love about radio. You don't have to show your face, but I uh, I do uh, appreciate Don going and telling all his friends. He said so. We have some celebrity friends listening today, and we uh, we're excited about that, and that's going to be happening in our second segment. Don Wilson, and if you want to go to my Facebook page right now, and you can kind of look at some of the page some of the pages that he uh, has sent us, and I'm I'm really uh, thrilled that I I have all these pictures now uh, in my on my page. And see, uh, and see what's going on. See what's up. And if you have some questions about some of these celebrities, that you go like, oh, I want to know, like, what was he really like? And you see Betty Rogers, who was on Channel 13's uh, Dialing for Dollars. And then you see Marvin Zindler. Everybody knows Marvin. And, uh, and so then you see me. And I'm, like, I don't know how many months pregnant with, uh, with Chad, my uh, oldest son. So it was, uh, it was really weird. He, and he had all these pictures. And then with Facebook you know it's easy to you know find someone uh you know put the name in there but because i probably look a little different than i did in 1976 he had to say are you the same cindy cochran that was on channel 13 you know back in the day and i was like yeah this is this is me so it's fun to find people that way and that's what's uh, cool about about facebook so if you guys um want to see who you, who's going to be t- you know, on the phone with us from L.A., uh, be sure and pull up the, the Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. Okay, so, so much stuff is going on, and I'm telling you, it, it sometimes it starts sounding like the weather in California. There's nothing, you know, it's always sunny, and it's always great and wonderful, but boy, is, uh, are things getting ready to happen because we're getting closer and closer in the stage of conventions and everybody's talking about how messy 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 all these conventions are going to be for the presidential election and we already see how many uh you know protesters that come out every time donald opens his mouth and speaks somewhere the protesters are out there uh trying to scare off the people from coming in and listening to the donald and then hillary in in all her uh glory accepting the actual she is the presumptive nominee i don't know why that presumptive has to be there but okay she is she's going to be the nominee unless she's indicted it's always you know you need to start saying unless she's indicted she's going to be the nominee and i don't know how you do that if she's indicted what how will she how will she run of course there bernie sanders is going to be meeting with the president today so we'll see what happens there i think he's there to try and talk him out of continuing the press against uh hillary all the way to the convention i think he's trying to talk him out of that so bernie may have you know the leverage now to get what he wants from the democratic party on some rules regulations that that go into their platform that may be what he's doing or uh he's saying unless she makes me the vice president i'm not playing Uh, i'm going to take my delegates and go home so we're going to see what happens and it's going to be so interesting but not as interesting as what's going to happen next we're getting ready to go to a break and when we come back we're going to be talking to don wilson from la our la connection don't go away we'll be right back you're listening to the cindy cochran show the cindy cochran show the first daily talk show serving montgomery county 
Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, and we're looking for more talk shows and volunteer DJs for our music shows. If you're interested in having your own talk show on Lone Star, or always wanted to live out your dream of being a music DJ, contact Lone Star Community Radio online at irlonestar.com slash contact us, or call the station at 936-647-5747 for more information. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. I am so excited to introduce you guys to this uh, to this guest and, and to uh, reintroduce myself uh, to our, our guest, Don Don Wilson. It's so funny, Don, because I kept saying Don Nel- cause Don Nelson being on Channel 13's show uh, with me for so long. But Don Wilson, and uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Cindy. How are you doing today? Fine. Now, it's, it's like 8.15 there, right? Yeah, it, it yeah. is. You uh, got up early yeah. for me. I really appreciate that, Don. Thank you so oh, much. It's- Anytime, Cindy. <laughs> well, you, I'm going to name you our LA connection. So uh, you got I, it. I even have one of your friends had uh, had reached out to me about. Uh, I, I guess he's an agent or anyway, and he wanted me to uh, be sure and see uh, this girl that he is representing and uh, and all. And so I don't know if he wants her to be on the show or what, but uh, it's really cool. She's my friend on. Don Wilson told me about you, so it was already already. I'm getting uh, I'm getting some contacts from you, so thank you very much. And uh, and then well, this great. this morning you sent me a picture of Mindy Miller, who was I guess the next to the last girlfriend of Elvis Presley. And uh, yeah. but that's okay. I mean the fact that you can say Elvis and I dated that's that's pretty much a great thing on your resume. <laughs> that's great. Oh yeah, yeah. She's a great lady. She's a good friend, and yeah. uh, hopefully, I'll see her this next week. And uh, she did some TV, uh, some acting, some modeling, and uh, she still got some projects. And there's a, a UK magazine called the Elvis Mag, and she just did an interview for them. So, well, it, still cooking. You know? I'm, I'm telling you, he just he. <laughs> He'll never go away. We'll never forget. I mean, the the day that he died, everybody, you know, especially my age, will know where they were when they heard that when they heard that announcement. And my sister was such a fan that she dropped everything that she was doing. Where and her and her husband went to the airport, got on an airplane, and flew and had to be there uh, and and stand at the gates, <laughs> the gates of Elvis. So it was he had such an impact on so many people's lives, but especially yours. Now, can you tell me why Channel Thirteen in 1976 uh, had you come on the on the show? Uh, I guess Good Morning Houston, or was it Dialing for Dollars at that time? Still, I think it was still. Yeah, it was Dialing for Dollars. Yeah. So tell me uh, why they called you. Uh, well, it was Paul Schmidt, of course, who used to be on the show. Love Paul and, Schmidt. And, uh, yeah, we went to his um, uh, music store, mm-hmm. and we got in a conversation, you know, and he said, we need to come on the show and talk, you know, about Elvis. And so, and I, I came on, and he talked to Betty for a little bit, you know, and uh, uh, so it was it was great. And, of course, I got to meet you, and... Uh, that was uh, the most exciting. Marvin Zindler. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. What was the story you told them that uh, that interested Paul so much? Well, what happened was, you see, my dad knew Elvis from way back in the 50s, and um, like 1955. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, there, was a, there was a show at the Eagles Hall. Elvis had been booked there in Houston uh, by my uncle, and uh, Elvis was doing a show there. Uh, one of his first, um, and Hoot Gibson was on the show, and he loved cowboys, and my dad knew him, and Elvis was too shy to go over to talk to Hoot, the <laughs> old silent Western star. Yeah. And so, and so after, uh, he, he took Elvis over, and he, um, my dad explained to him how he was one of Gene Autry's friends. Well, Elvis's favorite cowboy was Gene Autry. Mm-hmm. They were friends forever. Um, oh, that's great. So anyway, uh, 1971, 1970 rolls around, and my dad takes me to see Elvis uh, at the Astro World Hotel. He was getting ready to do the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, right? And uh, I met him. And uh, a year later, my parents and my sister got killed. They were uh, coming to get me. I was at my grandmother's house, and a train, a train uh, struck them, and they were killed instantly. And oh. so. Uh, 
Man. Um, Elvis, yeah, Elvis was just really um, affected by that, and that's how he pretty much took me under his wing and let me hang out with him, and he respected my dad. So that's, that's, that's pretty much the, just the story, how, how the connection happened. Um, well, that's amazing. I mean, that's amazing. What a tragic thing that happened, and and totally life-changing for you, just that alone. And then to have someone like Elvis Presley with the prominence, you know, and all the things he could do for somebody, uh, take you under his wing. You lived in Houston from when to when? Well, I see from the time I was two weeks old until um, I was about, I don't know, about 20-something, you know. But I, And in the summertime, I would go up to Memphis. You gotta be loose, you know, Memphis. I'll be up in Memphis. But, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> I can hear the Memphis accent. I can just hear it. Yes, you you went up there and hung out with uh, Elvis there. Yes, oh, yes, and, and he was he was wonderful, Cindy. I wish you could have met him and stuff. In fact, oh. the first time that I met him, yeah, he was he was griping about Houston Intercontinental Airport. <laughs> he, he, he he kept saying, I kept telling him, he was telling my dad. He said, I kept telling the driver. Or asking him, he said, "Are we in Houston yet?" He said, well, "You know, this isn't Houston Intercontinental Airport." I'm not going to say what he said. Uh-huh. But he, <laughs> he says, "Is there another airport I can come in?" So he always came in from Hobby from that time on. Did he? Really? <laughs> I love it. I lived in the East End and, and I grew up in the East End, and I remember that there was a girl, uh, one of our neighbors uh, across the street, that had dated him. When he was uh, mm-hmm. coming back and forth, at, in, uh, this early, early 50s, and he was driving wherever he went to, you know, sing and stuff. And so uh, she took a picture of him. He was on the phone, and it was right after one of his uh, gigs, and, and he's holding the money that they paid him uh, to sing there. And so they brought the picture over to us to see, because they knew what Elvis fans we were, and, and how exciting that was to see that. And then somehow... They left it there. We found it later, and they'd already had moved. And so there was no con- we didn't have contact with them. And there that picture was. And we just put it in our our album, and like there's there he is. And somebody was saying you kept you should have taken that picture and saw that picture. But uh, around that area in Houston and all, a lot of people had memories of Elvis before he became Elvis. Oh yeah. Yeah, in fact, he played Magnolia Gardens. Right, right. I think in late '54, and I, that's the earliest color film of him ever shot. It was oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that, but uh, but that's a huge connection. But then you met other people along the way from you know from him. Who was like your favorite that you met from, you know, from being around his house and hanging out there? Oh, gosh, I, I've got so many friends, you know, like, especially his buddies and stuff, you know, but, uh, you know, of course, then, like, Wayne Martindale, Sandy Martindale, they're still really good friends of mine, Linda Thompson, who was uh, uh, his girlfriend for five years. Right. Um, in fact, she's got a new book coming up in August uh, about Elvis. And I wanted to tell you before I forget that there's a new book by a photographer, a celebrity photographer named Tom Gilbert. And the book's called Blue Suede Shoes. It's a coffee table book, and it's going to be available August 16th. And uh, it's me and Mindy Miller and Bill Medley, the Righteous Brothers. A lot of Elvis's friends are going to be in, in that the book. book so. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so exciting. I, I got to, you know, there's a lot of people that you will come in contact with. You'll go like, you know what? If you want to get this message out to all over the world, you need to... Uh, to contact Cindy Cochran and be on the Cindy Cochran show. <laughs> you got it. In fact, I probably might get some of Elvis's pals to, to come on there if you want to talk more about E, oh. as we called him. <laughs> oh, yeah, because in August, um, you imagine, you know, when it gets close to his anniversary uh, of his death uh, date, will uh, will come up. You know, a lot, of the, a lot of stories, a lot of books will be coming out probably as well. And... Uh, you know, it's it's such a difficult time because of when we were so attached to Elvis and so attached to his legacy. And but people that you know, younger kids. Whenever you talk to people about you know the people you hung out with and all that, are you seeing like, wow, these people aren't remembering the names? Yeah, yeah. In fact, it's uh, I guess the older we get and everything, but. Uh, 
it's uh, Elvis to a lot of people is just like Hound Dog or Blue Suede Shoes. They don't really realize how the man truly was, you know. You know, of course, you know, if you grew up in that era, era you had, you know, the chance to, to know at least a little. I'm glad I really got to know him. And because of him, you know, I got to know uh, his idols, you know, Tony Curtis, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'll I tell love. you a real quick story about Tony Curtis. And he, uh, he was telling me, and I, I don't do the best Tony Curtis, but he says, I was in my trailer at <laughs> Paramount. And, and someone just pulls me, you know, out. And, you know, and it's Elvis. And I'm like, Elvis. And he says, Tony, I just got to tell you, man. He said, I'm, I'm a big fan of yours, you know. And he said, well, thank you. Thank you. And and he said, don't, but don't, you know, he called him Mr. Curtis. He says, don't call me Mr. Curtis. He says, all right, Tony. And he said, what do you want me to call you? He says, Mr. Presley. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's great. Oh, I, lo- I love that. That's well. See, that's what I mean. Is you, those personal stories and those things that you know, no one can ever take away from you. And you have all those those memories and stuff that you can share. And I'm sure you meet so many people. They go like, "What? You knew Elvis?" And then start asking you, you know, every question in the book. And you're so sweet and gracious. I'm sure you stand there, and we'll, and we'll talk to them. But your Facebook page is so cool because you, Thank you you bring those pictures back and let people comment on them and uh, and all. I just I, I love that cuz I I was going to stalk you and just see all the things that you would do, you know go through all your photos. <laughs> you know you really feel weird about that when you do that. You've got to you, you've almost got to say you know no I'm not stalking this is for you know I'm trying to get some information and all that but but you start looking at all the pictures and and uh, read all the things that people talk to you about. I think that's called stalking. There's got to be something that w- you know like, to tell people. Like, there's some manners. There's some things that you should think about when you're on on Facebook. Not you don't have to go into all their all their business. But I do. I love it. It's so much fun. It's like uh, it's like the old uh, you know phones where you everybody the the line the party line. This is what this is like to me. Is the party line? But. Uh, You've got to text everything, and see this first time I heard your voice in since 1976, and uh, so all we've been doing is texting, and you don't really get to be intimately, you know, with intimate with someone that's going. You're texting. You can't do the inflection. You can't do the oh, oh, that's so sweet, and all that stuff. So I, I think there's some, you know some barriers there but i was so glad that we uh, we're going to have you on the show like a lot and we're getting ready to go up to against a hard break and i know you know that what that means uh and but stay on the line don't go anywhere and uh, we'll be talking to don wilson real soon and i'm going to be looking at your questions facebookers and see what you want to ask don okay guys we'll, guys we'll be right back you're listening to cindy cochran show don't go away the cindy cochran show Real Reality Radio. We're starting to film our talk shows and putting them on YouTube. Your favorite Lone Star Community Radio show can be seen on YouTube under our Lone Star Community Radio channel and on City of Conroe's Our City TV channel on Sudden Link Channel 12. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see the most recently released videos and find more information online at IRLoneStar.com slash TV. The Cindy Cochran Show, the first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. Thank you so much for listening. And I know you guys are getting an earful of the really exciting stuff. I mean, here we have Don Wilson with us on the phone from L.A. uh, talking about the years that he spent under Elvis Presley's wing after tragically losing all of his family in in a crash. And uh, and Elvis was uh, there to uh, to look after, make sure that everything's okay. And it's just amazing. And he, and uh, he's got a lot of great stories. It's going so fast in this one hour that we have. But I got to say one thing before we get back to uh, get back to Don is that yesterday we had on uh, KCO uh, from the Five Minute Face. She's teaching women how to uh, do makeup with. Uh, with just a few little instruments make a professional look on their face and i certainly needed that and can you imagine that being on radio what and so uh anyway so i i talked to her and with us was carly crimen carly crimen was uh, uh 
has been an intern here at all different times. Carly is blind. And so she uh, she was on the first part of the show, and when uh, KCO came on, she was sitting there, and, and she started asking questions about, like, makeup and how difficult it is. You know, somebody blind, they, they don't care. Are they trying to put things on? Is this the right color and all that? Well, it, it was a great, interesting, you know, a conversation going back and forth. And KCO texted me yesterday and said, you know what? That show inspired me. I'm going to now find out the best way that I can go and help teach and empower blind, you know, women, girls that, that would like to put on makeup and, and the best way to do it. I'm going to study this and I want to do this. So th- that was amazing. So Carly, I know you're listening and I want to tell you that you inspired her and she's, you know, uh, jumped on the, a bandwagon for, you know, a humanitarian type thing. It was just great. She's going to come teach, you know, all the, all you guys. And she, we send her to Austin. We'll send her to Austin School for the Blind and uh, let her do her research there. And it's all because of you, Carly. So thank you so much. Okay, Don, sorry I had to work that in uh, because it's such a cool thing. But Don, I want to talk about your path uh, that you took after you uh, you left Houston and uh, and what you've been doing and in the industry and how you know how you've grown from all this. Okay, well, uh, you know, when I left Houston, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I just hung out with a lot of my buddies who were actually Elvis's pals, and you know, uh, George Klein and um, Richard Davis. Uh, Richard's passed away now. He was his bodyguard in this movie Stand In, but George is still on the air. He's on Sirius. Uh, uh, you know XM, you know on the uh, the Elvis radio. Oh, real? oh, okay, cool, very cool. And uh, yeah, he was he was Elvis's high school buddy. He's Paul Bear at his funeral, but uh, I used to go on the air with uh, with him on, in Memphis, and then I got my own radio show at a, at a, at a different uh, station. So I did that for a few years. I interviewed uh, everybody from Johnny Cash to uh, Billy Lee Riley and Glenn Campbell and. Uh, you know, wow. it was that was great. You know, yeah. And I, I, I recorded at Sun Records. You did. Um, yeah, at my first session, and that was I was kind of. Uh, I had Billy Riley. He was a, a, a rockabilly from the fifties, and uh, mm-hmm. he was on my show. And then uh, he said, "Come on down to Sun," and so I did. And he said, "You want to be on the record?" And, there I was. <laughs> oh, and then um, did you play? I made a couple did you albums play? After that, huh, Cindy? You, you played and sang, or what? You were. I sang. I sang, sang with him. Yeah. You sang with him. Uh, I saw the picture of you with the, with the uh, guitar under the handle with care. And at first, I thought it was Elvis <laughs> when I first looked at it, <laughs> and, and then I saw that. So I thought maybe you played as well. Well, I do play, but uh, uh, when I was at Sun, uh, I just sang. I sang a remake of. He had a whole song called "Red Hot." My girl is red hot. Oh, well, fifties hit. Yes. And he changed the changed the song around. It was the old session guys, you know, who played with him and uh, Jerry Lee and Billy played guitar and harmonica work on Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin records too. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's you know I've, I've had a really uh, fascinating you know life of knowing a lot of wonderful people um and then um you know of course since i was in la you know i got closer with larry geller who was elvis's pal in fact he and jay sebring began men's hairstyling in the late 50s mm-hmm. and they used to cut hair for like marlon brando and uh peter sellers and roy orbison you name them you know right and then uh and then elvis uh asked him to leave Jay Sebring for him. And so, and he, you know, was Elvis' hairstylist, spiritual guru, <laughs> as they would so call him. Cool. Yeah, I guess if Elvis said, that, I want you to get out of this barbershop stuff and, and, and come just be my personal guy. Yeah, I would say, yeah, let me think about that for a second. That's cool. Uh, I think that uh, all the people that you've probably had on your radio show and you've gotten to interview and and – and just and keep the story alive is so exciting now you did some did you do some uh television production as well some editing well what i did yeah um i did some documentaries right and uh uh, so i was production consultant it was my idea i heard wink martindale do a 12-hour radio show on elvis in 76 and i said if you could only do that in a video form 
Mm -hmm. And I was, I went to this production uh, office, you know, and talked to uh, the CEO, Dante Puglisi. And he said, well, instead of 12 hours, let's do 16. And he says, you're in your hard, you know, and so <laughs> wow. for three years, for three years, that's what I did. Second year, I got uh, Elvis's road manager, Joe Esposito, road manager, right? Uh, Joe Esposito. Right. And uh, between he and I, we both got over 200 interviews with uh, Elvis's pals and celebrities. And uh, it went to the Guinness Book of World Records as the longest documentary. Um, did it. Good <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a little side note. Yeah, and it was in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, what a resume you must have. What? How many pages is your is your resume? You think? Well, you know, I, uh, it's pretty thick. You know, it's just. Uh, but you know, the problem is, is I mean, I did documentaries for the Long Winding Road, the Beatles, Off the Record, um, the Rolling Stones, and um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, now I'm looking for a different project. And uh, hopefully I could get on the radio and do what you do, because I used to be on the radio. And uh, you, you have so much fun, because I, I listen to you, and that's just amazing. Oh, um, thank you. Thank but I do have, yeah. And, you know, like I said, and it's inspiring. You know, like the young lady that was on yesterday, I did listen. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree. Um, but I do want to tell you before I forget that I do have a new entertainment website that's uh, coming up. And Larry Geller is the one that was just like, Don, you can do it. You know, he's, he's like, he's like my best buddy, you know, and he's, and, uh, it's going to be called, or well, the website is, uh, being built right now. It's going to be Don Wilson, Hollywood and it should be up within the next couple of weeks. That is great. Well, you'll have to just post it on, on my page and, uh, just, you know, where to go, how to get to your, uh, how to get your website when it's built and and get that done because oh you've got so many rich stories to tell and and especially the way you got there the way you you know where you the way you came to Elvis is so cool a lot of people don't see him in that light and so they that would that's so inspiring to to know that uh, that he was looking out for you and and was touched by your story and what he did so I think that would be cool and then just so many people that you know now that knew him then and and what they're doing and what they're into, because like Joe Esposito, Esposito, how do you, say? Esposito, Esposito, yeah, yeah. Uh, he he was in his book, and you know the book that they wrote, and that upset Elvis, um, that you know some of his uh, the, he always kept the same people around him all the time. I never seen anybody so loyal. Put him in the movies and put him, you know, just right there with him. And so when when he read the a book that you know read. And those guys had written how, and it upset him that uh, they said that. And, the, and his guys were saying, "Well, we're just trying to look after him. We want we want him to change. We want him to to see what's going on." Do you remember those days? Oh, definitely. What it was is Red West, Sonny West, and Dave Hebler, and they're all my friends. And I really believe that they really intended to do it that way. But Steve Dunleavy, who also have have known. Uh, He's such a sensationalistic writer, and um, the, yeah. he he recorded all of them, and uh, he wrote the book. So ah. it, it kind of, uh, you know, but uh, sensationalized it. But um, Joe Esposito, of course, you know, he, he he didn't have anything to do with that. Oh, he, he did not have. Okay, manager. I'm glad you I'm glad you corrected me on that. Yeah, because... right. Well, you know, Joe. Yeah, I just saw Joe recently. Uh, he just moved to, uh, close to L.A., but uh, from Vegas. But yeah, uh, Joe has been really loyal to him. In fact, after Elvis passed away, he became Michael Jackson's road manager for a while. Oh, he did. Um, Good grief! Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, he's had a fascinating life too. But um, yeah, uh, that's one of the reasons that Elvis wrote that letter to me because uh, I, I have the last known letter that he wrote two weeks before he passed away, and um, uh, he just thanked me for my loyalty. I, I sent it to you in an email. Okay. And. Uh, and uh, but anyway, he was so upset about the book. He was like, he was hoping that the fans wouldn't turn against him, and I assured him oh, no. that they mm -hmm. wouldn't. You know, because he was very upset about it. Yeah, when they had a press conference, there was a pe press co conference with uh, Red and those guys, and um, 
and then I and I and everybody just felt so bad and were so mad at these guys because they had hurt his feelings yeah. or all his fans. But loyalty is everything. And when you you live a life like Elvis lived, that's why he kept a lot of the people that were with him in the beginning. I I assume that he knew they were there that's with him. True. He they were with him then, and that uh, they liked him then. They were loyal to him then. That they'll stay that way always. And and he was to them. So it just fascinated us who who are not very wealthy, but to see this guy that came out of you know the same situations we a lot of us were in and become rich and what he did with those riches and how he responded to those riches were so amazing. It was so interesting to see someone uh you know what they did with their money is they he gave a lot of it away and he would the gifts he would give people and, and all and it was sad that he had to live a life that was kind of like in prison because he had to like buy out the movie theater he had to buy out the skating rink or something so that it wouldn't you know people wouldn't come and mob and hurt wherever place he was going to that's true yeah he he had uh the biggest heart and um I was with him at the Memphis, and those are some other stories too. You know, a couple of times I was there, but you know, it's just if you complimented Elvis on anything, like man, that's a beautiful ring, he'd pick, pick, it, take it off his finger and give it to you. <laughs> um, um, you know, and one time, you know, like when I was first around him, you know, I was just saying, man, you just love your music, you got all your records. He's like, what kind of record player you got? And I said, I got one from uh, Montgomery Ward. You got a Monkey Ward uh, record player? How big is it? You know. And so I just said, it's the kind of folds out, you know, the speakers. He says, man, you need a better system than that. So, you know, he said, hey, Charlie, Charlie Hodges is one, one of his guys. And he said, uh, Charlie, you give me that envelope. He had $1,000 in it, you know. And uh, he said, go get yourself a good stereo system. There you go. So I come, yeah, so I come back to Houston you know, and then I think I think it was Jimco or one of those places. You know, you know. And, yeah. Um, they have the, the the salesman at the door. You know, and here I am, you know, this teenager. You know, and I said, I like to look one of your stereos. Like he's like, run away, kid. You know, you bother me type thing. You know. Right. I said, no, I've got the money for it, and I showed him right this way, sir. So I got a nice <laughs> stereo system. I can oh, guarantee yeah. you, if he found out that money came from Elvis Presley, you'd be like, uh, whatever you want, sir. If you'll just go back and tell Elvis uh, to buy stuff from us. Uh, listen, uh, Don, we're up against another heartbreak. Uh, so heartbreak heartbreak and uh, so stay with me don't go away uh we're talking to don wilson uh like one of elvis presley's best friends okay this is so cool thank you uh for listening and stay with us we're going to be right back with don wilson the cindy cochran show you ain't heard nothing yet Did you know your favorite show on Lone Star Community Radio are on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, you name it, they're on it. Check out where they are online on IRLoneStar.com slash shows and see which of your favorite hosts are online. Make sure to follow them and see what is in store for the next broadcast. Follow Lone Star Community Radio on Twitter at IRLoneStar or Facebook with Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. The Cindy Cochran Show. The most opinionated talk show on radio. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show with Don Wilson. I mean, um, celebrity friend, you know, I I just, I I can't imagine how many friends you have and how much fun it it is with people to go talk to you uh, and say, come have lunch, you know. But the deal is, is that you have such an interesting story in yourself and all the things that you have done. And so it's, uh, to me, just as honored uh, to get to be your friend and uh, to talk to you. So I, I appreciate it. We have a, a listener, a very loyal listener, I must say, Dennis, uh, has said, "Do you, were you with, uh, you were with Elvis when Elvis played in Conroe? I don't know what year that was or anything. He didn't put that in there. Uh, but he came to Conroe to play. Do you remember ever hearing about that, knowing about that? I wasn't with Elvis at that show, but, uh, you know, I, I do have like a tape of it, you know, and some photos. But, uh, yeah, no, I wasn't. I, I was at mainly Elvis's shows in Houston, and I right. went over to see him in Monroe, Louisiana, and Memphis, and a couple other places. But 
Well, I know that. So I wish I'd have been at that show. I heard it was really good. <laughs> well, so I'm going to have to. We'll have to have a conversation with our own, and this will be like third of Dennis uh, telling us about uh, what that show was like. But uh, I just I, I can't imagine with your head so full of all that stuff that you don't do a website, don't do a uh, you know like another a radio show uh, on the web and webcast it, and also your new. Uh, Websites coming up, uh, heart, uh, see, no, Hollywood Beat, uh, Don yeah. Wilson's Hollywood Don, Don Wilson Hollywood Beat. Yeah. yeah, in fact, Cindy, that's uh, like I said, my friend Larry Geller really was just like, Don, you can do it. You've got yes. all this information, you know, Ugh. you got all this. So, and you know, he was just telling me, and he's like, you got to do it. So I said, if you believe in me, Larry, I'll do it. That's so, and so awesome. I, I, I'm, I'm learning how to do it on my own, so that's why right. it's taking a little while to get up, but uh. Uh, meantime, the thing is, I'm going to put some old interviews that I, I've done that still look, I think, fresh because the stories are great, you know, from the different people I've interviewed, mm-hmm. um, and some some audio, and um, then I have some of my music, and uh, you know, I, I, I'm planning to do new interviews and uh, keep great. it current, but you know, have some vintage stuff. Oh, that's going to be so awesome. And, and and now you can cross off your bucket list because uh, you've been on the Cindy Cochran Show. So there there you go. I mean, this is just <laughs> – this is well, your I have to put day. a link on there, you know, because you, <laughs> you're in the know, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's right. That's right. It was funny working at Channel 13 all that time because there was only, like, you know, Channel 2, Channel 11, Channel 13. And so all those celebrities came through, and they came to the one that was, you know, uh, most watched, which was 13. And so I got to see so many stars. I just remember being so in awe of these stars that were coming through here. And like Butterfly McQueen, there she was sitting there with her eyelashes all messed up and she could hardly see it. And all I could think of is, you know, her, her line and Gone with the Wind. I'm going, I'm sitting right across from this person, you know, and that kind of thing. Right. So I can remember that, that feeling. You just see so many of them, but, but you see them in a different light. And that's great because it does make you realize that these are not gods. These are people that are just people and they're struggling with all kinds of things. And, uh, and so don't don't get too uh, caught up in all that. But we did as kids, and so we see these these people, and it's just it's so exciting. And wh- how old were you when you came to Channel 13? Well, uh, I, was, I was like 15, 16 years old in that picture with you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but, you know, I, I used to come to Dining for Dollars just to, to see some of the, uh, you know, um, programs, you know. And, in fact, one of the first times I was down there, I, I met uh, the lead singer for Steppenwolf, who, who, who had done the show. Oh, man. Uh, I met, oh. yeah, I met Slim Pickens and Chill Wills there. And right. so I know, yeah, and uh, so it's, I got a lot of memories there. In fact, I've got a lot of memories of Houston, in fact, when I was, in 1972, uh, Jessica Savage and uh, yes. uh, Ron Stone were down at Allen's Landing for Fourth of July, and uh, I went down there and played frisbee with both of them. And of course, we know what happened to Jessica. Yeah, that's so, what yeah, I mean. It's a lot of memories. Well, it. Yeah. I, I loved working there, and and all the stories I got to to have just from, by the brief encounters they have with different uh, people. Because I'd bring them coffee, talk to them in in the green room, and all that, and then I'd go do the the news for the deaf, the news for the hearing impaired. Anyway, listen, Don, uh, I've got to let you go. I just I, <laughs> this is so sad because we've got to have you on. We've got to do more stories. This is amazing, amazing stuff, and I'm just so glad to get to talk to you and. Uh, and reconnect me too cindy and uh your listeners can come to facebook for my albums we're going to rock and tribute to johnny cash you know and uh maybe i can uh, connect with them there and great talking with you cindy uh, great talking to your show with you again. oh you will be you will be here thank you don wilson everybody see ya uh listen guys we'll uh, we'll be here tomorrow we're going to meet the interns. It's so much fun because it's, it's like totally uh, youth oriented. And uh, these people are so cool and so up on, on everything and trending. So be with us tomorrow, Friday. And uh, we know what happens then, the movie. So we're going to talk about movies and entertainment and all that. Okay, guys, we'll uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Uh, make somebody happy today and weird. You'll be happier. All right. Bye. Love you, Mom.
Thanks for checking out this production on Old Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production. Produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Yeah, contact Dick Schistler at dick at irlonestar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.